Hyenas. What do people usually think of them? To us, they're kind of funny dogs from Africa who really like to laugh, run around somewhere near lions, stealing the prey they hunt down, and yeah, I guess that's about it. Except that the life of hyenas is far from being as nice as it might seem at first glance. <laughs> Today you'll learn why hyenas are so fond of carcasses, what habits of these animals are truly revolting, how hyenas were able to handle anthrax, why people feed these predators from their mouths, and why no cubs can feel safe inside the hyena clan. <laughs> Safaris might be fun for those excited about wildlife, but sometimes you can witness truly weird scenes in the wild. A naturalist once found a dead Central African rock python, a really big snake that apparently had been killed by a leopard. The carcass smelled simply disgusting, so people decided to not go anywhere near it. When suddenly, they noticed a hyena, instead of eating the dead python, the hyena approached it and began rolling around on its carcass. After doing this several times, the predator got up and left without taking a single bite. And it was very strange, although according to the rangers, scenes like that happen sometimes. Of course, one can try to find an explanation for this behavior. Some animals often roll in the feces of other animals to acquire a smell of these very feces. For example, leopards and lions prefer buffalo dung. But for a predator to roll on someone else's carcass? There are several theories as to why some animals would want to smell of other animals' dung. Some mythologists suggest that animals may roll around in dung or on carcasses out of curiosity to claim their prey or let the rest of the clan know what they found. Like, hey, I found dung! Good news for all of us! However, most scientists speculate that rolling around in dung or on the carcasses of other animals can mask the scent of predators and help them hunt. There's some logic to it. After all, if you're some kind of wildebeest, you hardly expect to be eaten by a python that's been dead for a couple of days. However, a pungent smell will make any animal wary, and thus make it even harder for the hyena to hunt. Then what's the point? Well, actually, scientists don't really have a clear-cut answer to that question. Science hasn't yet unraveled the meaning of such hyena behavior. But Steve has managed to find a couple of unexpected theories. For example, one of them says it's all about perfume. What? Humans wear perfume to be more attractive and socially successful, so why shouldn't hyenas do the same? A few years ago, an experiment showed that captive spotted hyenas like to roll about in their prey to acquire its smell. The researchers also found out that if the animal's fur smelled of carrion, that animal leveled up its status in the pack. That is, hyenas find other hyenas that reek of carcasses more attractive and interesting. Keep in mind that in hyena packs, there's a very strict, consistent hierarchy which makes it incredibly difficult to climb the social ladder. Maintaining a good status can also be difficult. Position of the animal in the hierarchy depends a lot on who befriends it in the pack. Imagine people also had to smell like a dead python to get a promotion. But yes, the more disgusting the hyena smells, the more popular it seems to be among its kin. Maybe this is why hyenas like their vomit so much. I hope you're not eating anything right now, because hyenas really love vomit. As soon as one hyena vomits, the others immediately rush to it to roll in that vomit. Both cubs and quite old hyenas who hate getting up do that. They get very excited about the vomit. Experts have even seen entire fights when teenage hyenas unsuccessfully tried to shoulder out adults just to roll in vomit first, and for a longer time. But you know what? Vomit, carcasses, and dung are nothing compared to anthrax. For those who've never heard of it, let me explain. It's a very dangerous, infectious disease that affects everyone in the area, and is so fulminant and excruciatingly painful that anthrax was even used as a biological weapon. Did you realize how dangerous it is? So hyenas can eat anthrax-infected corpses. It's been documented that hyenas have survived anthrax and rabies infections, as well as outbreaks of several viral diseases that have decimated populations of similar predators. Hyenas are so resilient that scientists are understandably curious. I mean, what the hell? It's like hyenas know some kind of cheat code and don't share it with the rest of us. There's a theory that suggests that evolution might be the reason for their resilience. The immune systems of animals that mostly eat carrion must have been shaped by selective pressure. If you can't survive a bunch of dangerous pathogens that get in your organism with your food, your species will be doomed. But hyenas are not extinct. They've learned to adapt and can now handle even anthrax. 
Because of their diet and habits, which I've already mentioned, many people think hyenas are, well, unpleasant, to put it mildly, disgusting even. But it's their nasty habits that sometimes bring tangible benefits to people. The Ethiopian town of Mekeli is home to more than 300,000 people and more than 100,000 head of livestock. When residents toss dead chickens, donkeys, or cattle into the city dump, spotted hyenas show up. Wild game has become scarce in the area, and the hyenas compensate for the lack of it with dead livestock. You'd think, what's the big deal? Well, the hyenas eating the carcasses stop the spread of disease. Scientists have estimated that one hyena crunches up to 2,160 pounds of dead livestock a year. In 2019, about 210 hyenas in McKelly ate about 4.2% of the available animal carcasses. According to the researchers, the scavengers prevented three anthrax infections and two cases of bovine tuberculosis in humans, as well as 11 cases of anthrax infection and 129 cases of bovine tuberculosis among livestock. Taking into account disease treatment and livestock costs, scientists estimated that hyenas save people more than $50,000 in the year the study was conducted. By the way, hyenas eat not only meat, but also bones. These guys don't mind anything edible at all, and their feces are white because of the bones. But even this feature proved to be beneficial. Scientists have found that hyena dung contains from 1,000 to 20,000 times more calcium and phosphorus than local soils, that is, hyenas unknowingly produce a great fertilizer. In addition, hyenas' eating habits spread nutrients to other animals that don't have access to them. Hyenas leave behind many small splintered bones which are used by birds. Birds that don't have access to these splinters tend to be more likely to suffer from diseases caused by phosphorus and calcium deficiencies. And then I thought, if hyenas are so useful, how come people still don't realize that and make use of it somehow? Why are we so squeamish about hyenas, even though they're actually doing us a service? Turns out there are people who do realize this. Records indicate that spotted hyenas have lived in the walled Ethiopian city of Harar for at least 500 years, where the predators did exactly what they do best, kept the city disease-free. It's believed it all began in the 1550s when a local emir built the city's walls. The low openings in the wall served as proof that the people of Harar actually wanted hyenas to come to their city. The hyenas ate most of the organic waste, thereby protecting the people from disease. The only problem was that packs of wild hyenas sometimes attacked locals and livestock. Booga, booga! So they decided to tame them. Well, a little. To make the animals more comfortable around humans, specially trained people approached them and fed them food scraps. Even today, hyenas regularly come to the city walls, but the locals aren't afraid of them because the predators just don't attack people. Every night, the men who feed the hyenas go outside and call the predators for dinner. <sighs> Seeing a pack of up to 30 adult hyenas circling around a single man might be unnerving, but the men don't run away and sometimes they even feed the hyenas from their mouths. The predators are so used to these men that they sometimes climb on their shoulders to grab a treat. But you know, even if I were told that some wild hyena is completely harmless and used to humans, I'd still prefer to keep my distance from it. Because as useful as these animals are, I know what they're capable of. It's not even about them rolling on vomit and eating all sorts of weird stuff really weird things like car tires. Spotted hyenas have been known to play with car parts, viciously attacking them, and yes, eating tires, with great enthusiasm. People even place thorn bushes around the wheels of parked airplanes to prevent the hyenas from getting to them, because the hyenas like them very much, especially if the tires have picked up dung on the runway. I guess that matches their taste perfectly. After all, they do like eating feces, you heard right, these predators indeed eat feces, human ones, and would even wait for this unlikely snack by a latrine in Kruger National Park, but how could they eat this? Actually, eating feces, their own and of other creatures, is pretty common in the animal world. Most animals eat feces because they contain undigested food and therefore vital nutrients that would otherwise be wasted. For example, coprophagous insects prefer the feces of large animals because large animals don't have very efficient digestive systems, which means there's still a lot left over after the food is passed through. But yes, sometimes animals eat their own feces as well. 
The lagomorphs are particularly interesting in this regard, as far as you can call those who eat feces interesting. Anyway, the small guts of these animals don't digest everything the first time, so they send the food back a second time. Yep, that's exactly what it looks like. They have two kinds of feces, edible and inedible. Thank you, evolution. You've done something super weird again. And then there are chimpanzees. They eat their feces only occasionally, not on a regular basis. The most likely reason is that some of the seeds they eat are only partially digested, so the chimps eat them again to harvest the nutrients. But back to hyenas. Remember I said that I wouldn't go near them because I know what these predators are capable of? Listen to this story. An elderly man was killed by a pack of hyenas in Zimbabwe after they pulled him out of bed. This happened back in 2020. The poor fellow, identified by police as an 87-year-old local man, was dragged about a thousand feet away from his hut. By the time the body was discovered, its lower half was missing. The same pack of hyenas is believed to be responsible for a series of attacks on cattle and goats in the area. Locals have been urged not to move around at night and to keep all doors and windows closed until the animals are caught. And apparently the situation wasn't so unusual for that area. Predator attacks on people happen during the dry months when food and water are scarce. Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, also suffers from hyenas that have moved into the city from the surrounding hills. In a way, they do people a favor by keeping the growing population of stray dogs and feral cats under control. Well, and by eating the carcasses of dead horses and other animals. But the problem is that hyenas periodically attack people right on the streets. About a couple of times a month, homeless people go to the hospital because hyenas have nibbled their fingers or toes. The homeless usually can't think clearly at this time, so they don't find out about what happened until after the fact. There was a time when a hyena snatched an infant from its mother's arms and ate it, right outside the Hilton Hotel. I'm going to give you a statistic, and you just look at it. In 2000, four people were killed by hyenas, and in 2005 and 2006, 11 people were killed and over 40 were injured. From 2010 to 2012, 12 people were killed, most of whom were children under the age of 12. And yes, all of this is happening within the city limits. In 2011, airport authorities had to call in hunters to shoot a pack of hyenas, which posed a threat to the landing and takeoff of planes. In addition, people living near the Ketching Public Cemetery complain about hyenas digging up and eating the corpses of poor people. Why poor people? They're the ones buried in very shallow graves. Different cities suffer from different animals, though. In London, it's wild foxes. They actually moved into the capital around the time of World War I, but since then, the number of foxes has only increased. You can understand them. The city's growing, there's more food that you don't have to hunt for, so why move into the wilderness? As a result, it's estimated that there are about 10,000 foxes in London today. In Delhi, people suffer from monkeys. Although it's fair to say that it wasn't the animals that came to humans, it was humans who invaded their natural habitat, rhesus macaques had to adapt, and now they have become a real problem for the city. The animals use Delhi's tree-lined streets to swing between buildings, damaging power lines in the process. Very often, they snatch food from people as they're walking and sometimes even tear up documents by climbing into buildings through windows. Municipal bodies estimate that as many as 40,000 monkeys live in Delhi, and although many solutions have been tried to avoid conflicts with them, nothing has worked. Nothing at all. They had to make do with giving guidelines for people so they would at least know what to do in the event of a close encounter. Too bad you can't give such guidelines to macaques. Okay, back to the hyenas. Actually, they appear to have been a problem for people for a long time. And when I say long time, I mean they've been around for 500,000 years. That's how archaeologists dated the bones of the Homo rhodesiensis, a fossilized human species. The bones were found in a cave in Morocco, and there were teeth marks on them, which made it immediately clear that this early human species had been eaten. And it was a hyena that did it. True, it's impossible to say whether the hyena killed the man or simply found him already dead and decided that his meat should not go to waste. Whatever the case, at that time there were several large predators, including hyenas, living in this part of Africa and all of them often encountered ancient humans. You could even say that humans were a resource for predators, which means that even 500,000 years ago, hyenas were already a threat. But there's an even more interesting thing. Once upon a time, humans' eating habits were, well, you might say, almost like that of hyenas. 
Traditional northern hunter-gatherers like the Inuit included rotting meat, fish, and fat in their diet. I still hope you aren't having a snack now. That said, there's no evidence that Inuit somehow suffered from their diet, such as experiencing serious outbreaks of botulism. The Inuit were fine. At this point, you might think that eating rotten meat is a northern people's thing, but there are other surprising facts. The hunter-gatherers and small farmers who lived south of the Sahara usually ate rotten animal food, consuming some part of it raw and some cooked. And they didn't just eat it to keep the meat from going bad or out of desperation, they actually preferred it to any other food. Even more surprising, this love of rotten meat remained widespread in the tropics until the first quarter of the 20th century. Perhaps I need to clarify exactly why rotten meat is dangerous. When an animal dies, its natural immune defenses stop functioning, finally allowing a whole host of microbes to enter and start decomposing the remains. And although these hungry microbes can often settle inside a corpse within five minutes after death, they still have to compete with much larger predators. That is, not only the microbes want to eat a dead antelope, but also, say, a lion. It's hard to stand up to a lion when they can't even see you without a microscope, and so the microbes produce many toxins that can kill most of the animal life. But if rotten meat is literally toxic, how come people can eat it, or even enjoy the taste? Scientists analyzed various data and came to some rather unexpected conclusions. First, the disgust response to the taste, smell, and sight of rotten meat is not hardwired in humans. Rather, it's a cultural bonus to consider spoiled meat unpleasant. Second, people were resistant to the pathogens in rotten meat, not because of genetic traits, but simply because they ate such meat from an early age. Naturally, under such conditions, the body gets used to anything. And finally, eating rotten meat is simply beneficial. Rotting works almost as well as cooking because it effectively pre-digests meat and fat before they're ingested. Perhaps ancient people, before they learned how to cook meat, ate it already rotten and thus made it easier to digest, process, and chew it. Just in case, let me be clear. Never eat rotten meat. I'm serious. Unless you're a hyena or an ancient man and have been eating it since childhood, don't do that. It's dangerous for your life. And now we're back to hyenas again, because there's more to tell. For example, female hyenas can crave the blood of their cubs even within their own clans. A new study suggests that infanticide may be part of a strategy hyenas use to maintain their social standing. Yes, sometimes rolling on a dead python isn't enough and hyenas switch into the hard mode. According to the data scientists have collected, 21 of the 99 observed deaths can be attributed to infanticide and it's always committed by females. It's rather difficult to understand why they would do that, but a hint of what prompts such killings lies in the hyena society. Males may come and go, while females remain permanent members of their clan. Aggressive interactions help determine which hyenas are at the top of the social ladder. Yes, again, hierarchy is the factor. And I wasn't kidding when I said it was very strict. In almost all the cases studied, the killers ranked higher than the mothers of the victims. That is, some females may use infanticide to keep the bloodline of their rivals down. But even if the females are related, this doesn't guarantee the safety of the offspring. Researchers saw one female hyena target her sister's two cubs, luring them out of the den before killing them both. However, it's worth saying that not all male hyenas abandon their clans. When males reach the age of two and a half years in age, they have a choice to stay or leave and join another clan. Each choice has its pros and cons. Staying in the clan means that the male hyena ranks first in the male hierarchy. His mother will probably be there to help, but the male will be limited in the number of females he can mate with because many female hyenas won't appreciate it. Why not? Well, they might be related after all. If the male joins a new clan, however, he can have access to more females and they may be even better than the females in his native clan but the male will start at the lowest social rank and he'll have to spend years fighting his way to the top. Well, if you didn't have enough of strange habits of hyenas, here's another one. Hyenas have very, very questionable spa treatments. When it's hot, hyenas will gladly lie down or even wallow in any muddy puddle they can find. It'd seem, what's so unusual about that? Hippos, for example, do the same thing, but hyenas don't just stay in the water, but also often urinate in it beforehand. They also drink from the spring where they relieve themselves. 
And frankly, I have no idea why. Judging by the rest of the hyena's habits, it probably has something to do with their social status too. After all you've heard today, it's hard to believe the fact that hyenas don't actually stink all that much. Yes, it seems that after all that stuff they do with dead pythons and vomit, their smell must be just nauseating. But experts say the bodies of hyenas don't smell worse than the bodies of any other wild animal, like lions or leopards. Still, there's something extraordinary smelly about hyenas, the so-called hyena butter, which is secreted from the anal gland. I think I don't need to explain where this gland is. Hyenas rub their butter into the grass stalk, a practice called scent marking. The smell is utterly disgusting, but it may please other hyenas. As a result, the animals greedily sniff these secretions to learn more about each other. To a hyena, a grass stalk is something like another hyena's social media account. By smelling it, the animal can tell which hyenas are nearby, males or females, young or old, pregnant or nursing. By the way, although it seems that hyenas are scavengers, they will never say no to fresh meat. Moreover, unlike other predators, hyenas eat their prey while it's still alive. There's a reason for this. Lions and other big felines usually choke their prey by grabbing it, crushing, or cutting the windpipe or breaking the victim's neck. This takes a lot of strength and physically drains the prey if it doesn't kill it immediately. However, hyenas don't have as much strength or enough patience to wait until their prey is physically exhausted first and then proceed with their meal. Hyenas will usually rip open the abdomen and immediately begin pulling out the intestines of their prey. Every vital organ from muscles to legs is eaten and the prey is alive at this time. Hyenas follow a simple principle. If the prey can't hurt you, you can eat it. Also, the sooner you start eating, the more likely you are to have enough before your competitors show up. Anyway, like I said, hyenas are weird and really creepy animals. But we should be grateful to evolution that the really scary hyena went extinct a long time ago. Meet Dinocrocutta gigantea. This hyena-like predator was one of the largest and strongest creatures to inhabit the ancient grasslands of China. One fossil shows us that it was clearly not afraid to hunt animals much larger than itself. And this was a huge hyena, weighing 838 pounds and almost 6 feet long. The monster's teeth and skull were exceptionally strong to deliver bone-crushing bites, and the predator was also very well designed by nature to eat bones. Thanks for going extinct, pal. Seriously. See you later.